the 20th of January, 2005, marked a very dark and dismal day in the dancehall industry. It wasn't the passing of a professional recording artist in the genre, but the tragic death of the dance icon, Vogel, aka Misawaki, who was shot and killed at a St. Andrew gas station after leaving a popular dance called Weddy Wednesdays at 2 in the morning. Before we can get into the details of this unfortunate event, people, let's take it back to where it all began, in a neighborhood called Trenchtown, West Kingston, in the capital of Jamaica. Gerald Levy, aka Mr. Wacky, was born on the 22nd of August 1964. Not much was detailed about his early life, but it was mentioned that he went to the Charlie Smith All Age and spent a brief period at the St. George's College. In the 70s, the Honorable Louise Bennett Coverly hosted a children's poetry and storytelling program called Ring Ding, and a young Gerard Levy made an appearance on the show. Also, in the 80s, he danced on a Saturday evening television program called Where It's At, and at that time, it was the number one televised show throughout the Caribbean. Both of these programs aired on the Jamaican Broadcasting Corporation, now called TVJ. So, people, one of same did get a little ear time before him did make it big time, which is always encouraging as a youth. Moving on into the 90s, Bogle formed a dance crew called Black Roses Crew that originated from Black Roses Corner, where Lincoln Avenue meets Russell Road in Arnett Garden, St. Andrew. This was the place for dancers to come together and share or create new styles of the performing art. Often called the dance hall master, it was inevitable that he would be the pioneer for several hit moves that plastered the dancehall scene in the 90s and early 2000s. So now remember notable dance moves such as the Wacky Dip, Bogle Dance, Out and Bad, as well as the unforgettable named after Black Rose's crew member, the late Willie Haggart. Willie Haggart, or Haggart, was known as a figurehead in the community, and around the early 90s, Haggart was invited by Bogle to join his entertainment party crew, Roses, which made Willie popular within the dancehall community worldwide. So, we will learn more on Willie Haggart later. With international recognition, Bogle did a cameo for the 1998 film Belly, which featured Jamaican culture. American rapper Naz and the late DMX were the main actors in this movie. So the storyline revolved around two friends and partners in crime in the streets of New York City, and the early days of Jamaican dancehall was included in this film. And you know you can't portray the early days of dancehall without Mr. Bogle himself. Yeah, if you haven't seen this film, you can go check it out after this video. Dancehall culture in the early 90s was captivating and it's something every youth wanted to be a part of. It was depicted perfectly and accurately in this film. If you're a lover of dancehall history, definitely check it out. After making his impression on dancehall, he was very influential to breakout artists at the time, Elephant Man and Beanie Man. They both skyrocketed Bogle and his dance moves on a global stage by putting his dance moves in their videos and promoting his name in songs. It was evident that Black Rose's crew was the hottest crew in the late 90s and early 2000s. Bogle was often booked and busy for shows and dance sessions all over Jamaica, and his team, Black Rose's crew, was always with him, the closest to him being Willie Haggart. Unfortunately, on the afternoon of April 18, 2001, Haggart was sitting and talking to two friends from the Black Roses crew on a Kingston street. When a Toyota Corolla pulled up and three men got out and opened fire, the two died instantly while Haggart died on his way to the hospital. So his funeral was very controversial as several members of then Prime Minister PJ Patterson's government were there among the estimated 5,000 who showed up at the National Arena to pay their respects to the community Don leader. Among these were then Finance Minister and Member of Parliament Omar Davies, Minister of Water and Housing Carl Blythe, and then Minister of Transport and Works Peter Phillips. So, people, the reason we had to look deeper into Willie's death is because of the consequences that resulted. Bogle was Willie's right-hand man, and it was rumoured that while in the US, Willie robbed money and drugs from a friend of his niece that belonged to a Colombian cartel. 
Willie ran back to Jamaica while sending the money over in portions, causing many left behind to lose their lives. It was also alleged that the Colombians had a bounty on Willie's head, and that was eventually the cause for his demise in front of his door. After Willie's death, his right-hand man, Bogle, allegedly gained all of his enemies, and men from jungle, as well as the Colombians, they tried to kidnap him as well as shots were fired at him. So did you find out who shot you? We know all things, man, but more time we just love things. You understand me as a father? So how many times had you been shot? Shot. Shot on my neck already, yes, sir. Yeah. Not at all. We get shot all, yes, already. Not at all. Come here, no one never have known yet still. More time here, company, yes, sir. I just some see it. Okay. So, I say, so, I say, so company is part of that? Yeah, man. I just to watch who you're yeah, with. Yeah, yeah. I just, I just them to me more time, man. Now, with all this danger surrounding the dancer, Bogle had no choice but to leave for the US. And while in America, he did shows and created new dance moves, which he saved for his return to Jamaica. While in America, the dancehall industry still needed dancers to carry on the trend. And this is where we get introduced to Janipe. Janipe, who was always one of Beanie Man's dancers, stepped in to fill the position. And this gave Janipe the recognition that Bogle had. So this inspired Bogle to write the catchy and memorable diss track, All Dem De. This song was a diss track aimed at John Hype, a former member of Mr. Wacky's Black Roses crew, who left to build his own dancing crew with Beanie Man in the early 2000s while Bogle was in America. In other track here, Bogle asks, where were these people all along? Send them back where them come from because him did used to run the dancing scene by himself. John I later answered back with his own diss track titled Bust the Lock. Eventually, Bogle went back home to Jamaica, and it was noted that a year before Bogle's death, there was an ongoing feud between dancers Bogle and John Ipe, which was no secret. Throughout that year, both dancers were present at several popular dancehall events with their respective entourage. With this, you know, followed physical showdowns and name droppings of who better than who and all that trivial nonsense which clearly showed that there was tension between the crews. Moving into a week before Mr. Wacky's unfortunate passing, it was said that he was on a hiatus for a while, not making any public appearances. However, Bogle was present on stage at a dance at the Asylum Club when Beanie Man took John Ipe on stage and proceeded to say that Bogle is old news has been, and Janipe is what's trending. Bogle took the stage in defense of himself, and then the crowd booed him off the stage, and he was later seen by Don Mafia backstage, crying. Being a man carry Bogle, Janipe on stage, and I said, Janipe, I know I deal dance and Bogle I has been, see? Mm. So when I look now, Bogle go up there and I try to defend himself and the people them boo him. And when I me, when me look, me I go to the bathroom and I say, Bogle stand up in the car and I cry. So I did feel a waste. The night of Wednesday, January 19th, 2005, turned out to be a fatal one. Bogle was attending what turned out to be his last dance, the wedding Wednesdays. This was held at the Burlington Avenue headquarters of the Stone Love Sound System. Beanie Man and his entourage were present, as well as Bogle and him crew. Bogle had a trick up his sleeve to regain his reputation. During the dance, Bogle opened up a suitcase when they bring with him that had two fowls inside. Yeah, you wanna hear me right? Two fowl, two chicken, two hen, two cock, wh whatever you wanna call it, the man bring two fowls in at the dance. When Bogle let out the chicken them, it was said that one of the fowl them, with a bead pan him head, fly go over to where Beanie Man was standing and everybody start laugh. So I guess you could have said that Bogle trick worked for a hot second. Beanie Man wasn't amused as him faced it been up. It was understood that followers of Beanie Man took offense at the fact that Bogle had brought the foals to the dance and the implication was made as to who the foals represented. Some considered it to be disrespect and even vented anger at Bogle. Beanie Man and his followers were the first to leave the venue and Bogle say him not gone away until him ready for go pasa pasa where him they plan for do the same foal thing. <laughs> So people, you know, see where I'm getting name from, Mr. Wacky. He's a gimmicks man. Jamaican dancer culture, like one of the richest thing you know, we ever find. <laughs> man, I bring foul in a dance. And fast forward to now, 
them them a chop up chicken in a dance, them a peel banana in a dance. You not go find that nowhere else but Jamaica. <laughs> Different type of culture. Love it. Bogle and him crew later left Weddy Weddy heading for Pasa Pasa. When Wogo realized that he was low on gas and stopped at the Esso gas station on Constant Spring Road, Wogo was sitting in the passenger side of his F-150, driven by one of him charging him. Police reports state that, while at the gas station, two men armed with handguns rode up on a grey Honda F4 motor and opened fire, hitting all five who were in the vehicle. They were taken to the hospital where Levy was pronounced dead and three others admitted in serious condition. A fourth person was treated and released. As news of Bogle's death spread far and wide, persons who knew of the ongoing feud and who were present at Weddy Weddy immediately linked the death to Beanie Man and Janipe because of the previous friction. Less than five hours later, the Dillian Avenue house of popular dancer Janipe was firebombed and it was strongly believed that this incident was a reprisal for Bogle's killing as both dancers were said to be involved in a feud. Bogle's demise obviously left the dancehall industry shook and with the reprisal upon Janipe's house, everybody was wondering what's next and if anybody else could avenge Bogle's death. I remember when this happened and all the details never did so clear but this was a super controversial case that stayed relevant in majority of the Jamaican households at that time. This was just an unfortunate situation that we really wish they turned out differently. Bogle was laid to rest on Sunday, February 6th at the Dovecot Memorial Park after two weeks of festive activities and a Thanksgiving service, which eventually turned into a jiggy affair. So even in death, Bogle had a jiggy send-off, which speaks volumes to the legacy that he left behind, not only in Jamaica, but worldwide. Doing this research, it was so impressive and heartwarming to see how much people all over the world actually know and love him. The legacy what Bogle left behind as a dancer is totally unmatched. Then Trio Voicemail released the hit single, Wacky Dip, on the Don't Know That Go. And Rihanna released her R&B hit single, Road Boy, and she can be seen doing the Bogle dance in the video. Also, at Rose's Corner, dance workshops and tours have been held in honor of Father Bogle. Thanks for watching, guys. This was a very fascinating topic to discuss and share with you. Would I love to hear in the comments? Please let me know what you think. Put on the detective hats on and let me know. Don't forget to poke that like button. Poke it.